Welcome to Athletes and Entrepreneurs, the Alumni Journey. I'm Rob Finkelstein, founder and CEO of Alumni Direct. We've created a platform to help alumni and athletes network and connect through their affinity groups. And this show is based on teaching and inspiring athletes that there is life after sports. We interview former collegiate and professional athletes, and we talk about their journey and ask for their advice and, and just to really help out these uh, these athletes. It's such a, a major issue today between mental health and financial literacy, and we really want to make an impact on it. So uh, today we're uh, really excited. We got Nick Silverthorne. How you doing, Nick? Hey, I'm doing good, Rob. Thanks for well, having me. Uh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. And uh, so Nick was a college swimmer at Cal Berkeley, and we were joking around before. So as an athlete, he went to Cal, and as a as a student, he went to Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, once he got done with swimming, uh, he transitioned out and he started getting into uh, basically a, a career in sales, working on the sports side. He worked a little bit with the Oakland A's and the uh, Miami Dolphins. Ultimately, he now is uh, in sales management at the company Learn It, which he'll tell us more about uh, later. So uh, usually what I like to do, Nick, is, is kind of talk about playing sports growing up and how that shaped you leading up into high school and college. Yeah, so I uh, I had the pleasure of swimming for um, the Pleasanton Seahawks, a well-renowned club in the Bay Area. Um, they were known as one of the the, the harder places to to take your your children. Uh, looking back on it, I mean, my my dad would get up at at, at three in the morning. I'd wow. get up at three three forty. Um, and if you weren't on deck at four 30 in the morning, you were locked out and it was better to luck next time. And we'll, we'll see, you, we'll see you in the afternoon. Um, if you were cut, cutting it close to four 30, sometimes you'd get a, a good evening from the coach as, <laughs> as you walked in. Um, and, and, you know, everything that we did there, I didn't realize it at the time, but it was setting you up for success. Um, you know, in college and in a college athletic setting, but then, uh, but then also in, in life too. I mean, I can't think of a time I've, um, I've been late for anything because, um, <laughs> you know, it's ingrained in you from, from such an early age. And, um, you, you know, we had those, those morning, morning workouts leading into, uh, you know, a full day, a full day of school, which, you know, I think high school is uh, the schedule is almost harder than college in a sense. You're there all day long. Um, it's uh, it, and then and then going from that straight into another three thirty to six in the evening uh, swim workout, straight into homework. And so you know, it really it really laid the foundation for for discipline, hard work, um, having lofty goals. When you know most. 14, 15, 16 year olds are out doing, doing whatever. Um, I mean, you're working towards something, um, that, that you have a, have a lot of pride in, put a lot of time into. And so, um, that was, that was kind of my foundation that, that set me up for success at, at Cal. And then, and then later on in life of just having, um, having structure, having some discipline, um, I think I think having that edge of just having to be in at, at 4 30 a.m. you know really really does something to you and it puts you in a uh, in in a place where you can think a little think a little bit bigger and, and things things later in life aren't as tough when you have challenges like that from such a young age yeah I mean that the skill set that athletes develop and everything that you brought there it's that foundation being built it, it's uh it's tremendous and it, it's a lot of dedication hard work I mean I know the two sports that I think of is, is, um, you know, swimming. Um, and then, uh, I guess, I guess that's the main one, uh, ice skating too. You hear a lot of stories about people having yeah. to get on ice, like really early, I guess ho maybe hockey is the same way. I guess it's, uh, you know, for me, I was a runner. So my mine was usually after school, uh, during the school year, but I mean, there were times we ran in the morning as well, but not that early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a mix of kind of the work required for a sport with so many, uh, nuances and little ways to get better, but then also availability too. I mean, if you're playing hockey or ice skating, there's not many rinks in, in your area, That's true. Yeah. at least, at least here in the States. Um, same thing with pools running, you know, you can, uh, feel like you could run most places <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, no, you're right. track or something. That's true. That's, that's a good point. So did you ever dream about being a professional athlete? And, uh, if so, what sport? Yeah. I mean, what, what kid doesn't, you know, um, I think I, uh, you know, obviously, obviously swimming was 
the sport. That's what I did full time year round since I was since I was 10. Um, I think being professional in that sport is very difficult. Um, you really don't make much money. And, uh, uh, you know, unless you're in the, the very top one percent, um, I mean, you could you could be an Olympian and not have any chance to make revenue after um you, you get back from the games which you know of course i i didn't make the olympics i'm I, I can't necessarily speak from experience on that but uh but i mean that's that's just the nature of it unless you're unless you're bringing in revenue you're not you're not signing to teams necessarily you're not getting getting those kinds of checks so uh yeah as a kid i mean yeah sure you want to make the olympics and and be uh be be a professional but um you know in practice there's really a uh, much harder path to to get there than even making the Olympics, which is most people's kind of goal in a in a sport sure. like swimming or track or any you know right. you know any of those sports that are on a four year cycle. Yeah, and I mean that's a that's the thing. I mean even uh, you're like it's it's such a, a tough grind, and we'll talk more about it with you know transitioning out of sports and all that. But just I, I yeah. can imagine to train your whole life for you know whatever that event might be. It might be like a minute or two minute event. And then you, you've performed, and even if you win a gold medal, probably still uh, you see a lot of these Olympians that kind of get forgotten, unless they're you know Michael Phelps or you know these people have that that name. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean that's just the it's the name of the game in a sport like swimming. Yeah, no, I'm sure. So let's talk about a big thing for us is um you know we talk about transitioning out of sports. So um you know you you your whole life you're working at it, and then ultimately you when you're in college, were there I guess was your education around, uh, and not just swimming that from what you saw, but there's people transitioning out of sports. Did they talk about that at Cal at all? And were there programs like big picture to help people once they were done? Yeah. I mean, our, our team did, uh, did a really good job of that. We had, uh, we had monthly dinners where we'd bring back alum and they would share their story and, uh, kind of what we're doing now, they'd almost try to to take their experiences on the Cal swim team and show how that set them up for success in their careers and jobs. Um, we had a career um, a career center, people that were focused on that, connecting athletes with with job opportunities um, and some some external resources as well. So, you know, I think overall Cal did a pretty good job, you know, especially amongst the uh the 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 swim team uh super tight-knit kind of community um all of our alum come back for ncaa's to, to cheer on the guys and so even post-grad we're still making some of those connections with folks um that that went through the same same journey so uh you know cal cal swimming i'd say did it better probably than the 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 university as, as a whole um right. Or at least, you know, I feel like every school has programs and it has, does a poor job with PR and <laughs> promoting those um, amongst their their student student athletes. But um, I know that just being on the swim team, the, the sw opportunities from other Cal swimmers and Cal Aquatics as a whole was a little more in your face. And they did a really good job um, connecting us with folks. Yeah, and that, that's great that they do. And I think it uh, you bring up a good point, too. I think it, it, aside from being, you know, every school is different, but also I think within the schools and the athletic department themselves, it just, I think it depends. I mean, some schools might zone in on football or some of the other sports, but yeah. um, I, I think the other thing that I've heard a lot of too, from different athletes is it, um, the culture of the coaching staff too. They, you know, looking up to the coaches and I think the more coaches get involved in that uh, is probably better for their teams. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they have to be champions for their, their team. And if all they care about is performance on the field, they, they usually suffer. I mean, even, um, our, our team throughout the years, the better our GPA was, usually the better we performed because there wasn't stress on the back end. And I think that translates to, um, you know, the career side. If your team's performing well <laughs> academically, they're sharp people, they're, they're folks that, um, you know, other, other people want to hire. <laughs> and, uh, and then you have, you have coaches that support things outside of the, outside of the pool or outside of, you know, whatever, whatever sport you're doing that I think set them up really well for success. Yeah. And, and I mean, one of the things we're working on and, you know, we've been talking about going to different schools through the athletic departments, but helping to develop maybe additional curriculum on top of what's what's there now. I think um, I was talking to one guy on a, a previous podcast. He played football in college and he said that for him, if there would have been, say, a four week workshop or maybe a semester that 
was kind of enforced that the athletes had to take that would have really helped out because a lot of people, I mean, especially when you're zoned in and, you know, you're, if you're in a position where you are an elite athlete and you might have a mm-hmm. chance to go, whether it be the Olympics or as a professional athlete, you might not think as much about this. And it's really important because, you know, there, there is many years afterwards when you're done with that sport. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, that's a, that's a good point. I think a, a lot of things were done kind of ad hoc, just, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do this. Or we're, even if they were at a, on a structured cadence, kind of like Cal's monthly, um, monthly get togethers, it's, uh, it's uh, having some kind of boot camp or an, an intensive session um, could, could really make a big difference. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think it, it's something that, to definitely look at and, and see ways that we can help. So uh, another area, uh, and you touched a little bit upon it before, but we'll expand upon it, is uh, alumni connection. So, um, you know, you talked about swimmers coming back. So talk a little bit about, um, I'm not sure if you know about maybe like the other sports there as well, like if, if they encourage, if the school encourages athletes to come back, uh, maybe when you were there and then kind of how it is today. Yeah, so I mean, when I was there, I know the university would would host uh, host events and have have people from different professions up at you know up at the football stadium, get all the athletes together. So there 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 were some opportunities. Um, the 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 ones that stuck with me the most were our, our our team dinners. The whole team gets together and we bring bring back another Cal Aquatics alum, so swimming or or water polo to talk about their their journeys. And it was cool because you'd you'd have a mix of CEOs, you'd have guys that were um engineers that weren't managing people but were were just really good at what they did um you have some people in, in sales um and so you almost get a story from all kinds of different different industries and then start to piece together how they made that transition and i think that was one of the biggest things i gained from from those meetings but then also just swimming as a whole was was building building my story um, when you have a career under your belt, you could talk, you could talk about challenges that you went through on the job. You could talk about ways that you've handled different situations when you're, when you're 22 and you've never even opened Outlook before, you know, you haven't sent a, sent an email or gone on a Zoom meeting or anything. It's, it's really hard to kind of articulate what you've done when really you have a great body of work behind you. You know, you've, you, you get up early, you have, you have goals, you set them, you get over challenges and there's so many things that you can share. And so I think that just having people come in and, and hearing their experiences and how they transition really helps you shape that, that story that you can tell at a job interview and you can tell in your next job interview and even well into your, your career, you can kind of explain how athletics set the foundation for, um, what you ended up doing in the professional world. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, I, I think that's, you know, we talk a lot about that, the athlete skill set and how it, uh, you know, goes into the, the, um, into the business world. And, yeah. um, you know, like you touched on, I think it's, it's great to have the, the alumni coming back and, and, um, you know, sharing their experiences and not just from the sports perspective, but the real life, like you said, like the jobs and careers and things like that. Cause I know other athletes look up to it. And I, I think, um, it's something we definitely encourage is that to, you know, reach out to fellow alumni. I think people are willing to help if you reach out. And, you know, what we've seen too, with some of these schools, uh, they might have better programs. I know there was one, uh, one uh, agent I was talking to and she talked about how her athlete, former NFL guy wanted to come back. And he was kind of like, they weren't openly respect receptive to, which is a shame because I think it's, yeah. they, they bring a lot of value. I think that sometimes the alumni athletes kind of get forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about um, networking, connecting. So, you know, it kind of ties in a little bit into that alumni thing, but um, give your thoughts on networking and connecting and the importance of doing it while you're still in your sport. Uh, I I mean, I I think that while you're in your sport, people are probably the most, the most eager to help you Um, versus maybe someone that, that's, uh, you know, been working for a little while you're also probably a little less likely to reach out if you have a career, you have some other connections, you may not even be thinking about this whole uh, support system you have behind you. Whereas if you're, if you're a junior senior and looking for an internship or your first job, um, you're, you're really going to want to leverage um, people that have, have been in your shoes before. So uh, something that I did to get, to get my first, first internship, but then also, you know, thinking back on it, 
probably didn't leverage my uh, my Cal or swimming connections as much after that initial push. So uh, I think it kind of goes both ways. Of one, you're you know if you're if you're out of school, you're probably a little less likely to take that initiative to to reach out to someone because you might have had one or two jobs already. Um, and you know, if you're, if you're an alum, you're probably really excited to hear from someone on the team. It brings back memories of when you were on the team and in that same kind of position and, 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 you, you know, you're really looking forward to helping someone. So I don't think it's ever too early to start having informational interviews, or if you live in the same area as someone that, that you're an alum with, uh, you know, you live in the same area as an alum getting together, getting coffee, or even hopping on a, hopping on a zoom and just talking through what their day to day looks like. And, you know, I talked about the value of those those team meetings that the Cal team would do when we'd bring back our alumni, and, and you can create those on your own. Um, you can you can set those up with whoever, not just whoever the coach decides to bring in, but anyone in any industry that you have some interest in. Just sit down with them, hear about what what their day looks like, what they do, what they what they needed to know to get to that point in their career. I think that there's there's a lot of value in that, even if it's um, not tied directly to an application or getting a job. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important. I mean, I think, um, you know, networking connect, especially with alumni is, is great. And even when you're younger, like, you know, in high school, just being open to people are willing to help and, and to, yeah. to be able to reach out to people and understand the power of that. And even, like you said, not even necessarily for a job. I mean, think about, you know, networking connecting could be for anything, maybe, you know, as you go along in your career, um, it could be even if you decide to go into entrepreneurship and you've got some kind of business and you're looking for help. I mean, definitely encouraged to tap into alumni and other people within your network um, that can help you move forward. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the earlier you start this, the lower the, the, the lower stakes the ask is, uh, meaning if you're if you're a sophomore and you just want to simply sit down and hear about someone's day and what they go through and what their what their job looks like. Um, that's a heck of a lot easier to do than than three years later, where it's, hey, I had my first job. It didn't go very well. Help me out. Can you get, get me somewhere? You know, I think um, what, whereas that person that asked soft, you know, sophomore year of college is going to have a much easier time reaching out to someone and saying, hey, uh, we, we talked a few years ago, uh, really took your advice to heart and now I, I need to make a career change or I need to make a pivot. What do you got for me? Uh, I, I think it's much easier to do when you start out um, not asking for a favor. Yeah. That goes into life too, not even just professional connections. You can't just text people when you need something. No, and you got to be willing to give back to them too. I think it's a yeah, it's a two-way street. I, I always, from my perspective, I try to go in like, how can I help you kind of a thing versus, you know, what can you do to help me? So it's, right. it's a a good good lesson there in uh in networking. So um yeah. let's let's talk a little about it. It's a little bit of a controversial topic, and and I kind of want to zone in too uh, from a swimming uh, perspective. But talk about um NIL name, image, and likeness, and give me your thoughts, positive and negative, and then maybe share some of what you're seeing now, especially within your sport. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, overall, I, I like it. I mean, swimming was a sport where you'd race for your school September through March. That was kind of our, our college season. And then, and then April through August were uh, USA swimming meets where, you know, our whole team would be training for Olympic trials or world championship trials and trying to make a, you know, some kind of team. Obviously there were, you know, the top end guys had a really good chance. And then guys like me were along for the ride and we go, <laughs> you know, we go and, and, uh, still compete in these meets, but not necessarily, um, you, you know, expect to expect to to make a team or anything. But uh, along the way, there's there's pro swim meets where where guys would have a chance to to win money, um, and guys would have to actually return their winnings for a meet, not even associated with the the, the school or the NCAA. Um, because of this amateur status, um, which is which is wild to think. I mean, you get, you know, you get second in the hundred breast at a meet, and you win two hundred bucks. Prize money is not even crazy like it is in sports like tennis or other, yeah. you know, other things. And, and you, you have to either justify your receipts or or return it somehow. Um, 
And I mean, it, it was, it was getting ridiculous where it's, it's like, you, you know, if you were a professional, you would, you would be winning this. It's not like you're promoting a brand or anything at, at that point. Um, so, you know, at the very least from a prize money perspective, yeah, name image like this is awesome. Plus I think it's, it's cool. You could kind of start to build, um, build, build your brand early on. Um, it, it, it's eliminating the, the choice for people to, um, that, that, that they may have to make in other sports where it's go, go professional or, um, stay in college and get your education. Um, so I think it's going to make for, uh, you know, <laughs> a higher level of performance at the, at the collegiate level, but, um, it won't make 18, 19, 20 year olds have to make that call of, you know, do I, do I want to make money or do I want to get my education and, and build some experience? You can kind of do a little bit of both. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, I think it's, um, I think the consensus is really good. I mean, it's, it's giving out yeah. to, you know, the, the, the couple things that have come up on the, not necessarily the negative side, but just the potential of that would be um, the education of it. We're just, you know, financial literacy, for example, there's just, you know, stories out there where just being kind of money being maybe misspent and mm -hmm. kind of hurting that athlete ultimately. Uh, but I think to your point too, from a branding perspective, uh, it becomes a, you know, so if you handle it the right way, it could be, you know, really good for you. So um, are there, are there like any swimmers? I mean, you hear about all these different stories, these, you know, basketball players, gymnasts, you know, football players, are there swimmers right now that stick out that are, uh, that are doing well in this space? Um, that, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think looking at some of, some of the other sports, you know, you've seen, you've seen basketball players, gymnasts, and, you know, we've got some names in mind that you just, you can't go on your phone without, sure. without seeing them, seeing them pop up. Um, <laughs> swimming probably, you know, doesn't have that, that person and, you know, any, any sport that has that one, one or two, at least at the collegiate level has one or two people that you can kind of think of that, that do a really good job. Um, one issue with, with swimming is it, it, it's, you know, it always has to be so, so friendly. Um, everyone in competition is, um, you, you know, there's, there, there's no, there's no real rivalries. Um, there might be competitive rivalries, but then the storyline is always that they're, they're friends outside and they hang out and they're, they're buddies. And, uh, it doesn't have that kind of fire that you get in, in a lot of other sports where, uh, you know, there's a little trash talk, a little flavor. Um, and I think that kind of carries over to the, to the NLI, NIL, excuse me, um, uh, side of things where, um, there isn't, there isn't that, that, that person or that group of people that have really stepped up and, and kind of taken ownership as far as, as far as I can see, you know, again, I'm a, a little less in the weeds than maybe someone that's in college swimming, but um, no one's, no one's really taken it by storm and is getting these multi-million dollar right. deals. Um, so, so yeah, I wish I could name some people. I think swimming kind of, I think that, I think it needs that. It needs some personality and some flavor and that's, it's been lacking on the, you know, the international scene, yeah. um, the the collegiate scene where it seems a little more, a little more friendly. Um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be somebody that's going to stand out with it. So, uh, so let's talk, um, you know, one other area, cause you're, you know, newer out of it, newer graduate uh, per se than me. Uh, that was a long time ago for me, but um, we touched briefly on social media. Talk about um, with social media, was there um, classes that the athletes had to take from that perspective as far as just, making sure to manage because you hear the stories of uh the mismanagement of social media you know, someone that said something when they were in high school and unfortunately comes back and gets them later on um talk a little bit about that yeah i think a lot of those stories started to come out while i was in school um okay. you know like uh examples like josh Hader and some of these these pro athletes that kind of had uh, dirt from their past come back um the, you know, I think Instagram became big, like my junior year of high school, and then slowly started evolving into a platform that people could, could, could monetize, you know, throughout, throughout my years in college. But, um, we, we didn't have tons of training. The general sentiment was just kind of leave it alone. Um, don't, don't post anything you wouldn't want your mom to see. And that usually, that usually, uh, you know, was, was good enough advice. <laughs> yeah. 
No, for sure. I, I yeah. Somebody said uh, another person. They're thinking, don't put anything that your grandmother won't want to see. It's the first time I heard that. But you know, same yeah. kind of difference. You know, you don't want to you want them to see that. So let's talk about um, transitioning out of sport. So we'll we'll talk about um, you know, your transition out of sport, but I also want to lean in a little bit too, just kind of get your thoughts because I you know we we touched on the beginning just the some of the struggles, uh, especially the Olympic athletes face because of that the journey they take with how hard they work and, you know, that short term event. And then, you know, the, the other side of when they're done competing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So where, where do you want to start? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I threw a multiple uh, choice question. Out. Let, yeah. Let's start with, um, let's start with the Olympic side of it and then we'll get into your transition. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think, and again, I, I wasn't someone that was necessarily on the, I went to Olympic trials, but uh, didn't go into a, a meet like that expecting to, to um, you know, make a make a run at the team. But just from being in swimming and having a bunch of teammates that um, did, you know, earn earn their spot on on their Olympic teams, it, it becomes tough um, because you work so hard at something that happens every four years. It's not a, you know, it's not the the NBA where you got a championship season and you, or you, you get booted in the second round, but you can run it back the next year. I mean, it is a, it is a four year thing and you could become world champion or, you know, there's, there's several kind of intermediary uh, milestones, but really the, the pinnacle of success in sport like swimming is making the Olympics. And if you're working towards something like that and and don't do it, um, then, then you're evaluating your life choices on, on a four-year basis as opposed to, as opposed yeah, to a one-year tough. basis. Um, and you know, kind of the fork in the road is, well, do, do we, do we want to run this back and, and try four more years? Um, because you're not making much money if you're, unless you're making a, making a team, um, or do I, do I kind of go down that professional route and start, um, start start a career in, in something else so um that that component of it is really tough and a lot of times I, I feel like people um people feel lost making that jump when um all their efforts have been in something physical and they can't wrap their head around having to having to sit at a desk um and and you know and do something or learn learn a hard skill that's different than um what they did in the water uh, I, I think a lot of people, and and you know, I I would as well. Is, is they try to leverage their their background in swimming and uh, go to coaching and that kind of stuff, which is which is which is really good. But I, I think a lot of people default to something like that because they don't necessarily know what else to do either and don't have the support system. So, um, so that 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 piece is is interesting to see how people handle that kind of divide of. Um, you know, do we, do we want to run it back or do we want to, um, you, you know, do really a full 180 and start, start building a, uh, you know, a professional career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Um, it's tough. And I mean, I know it's a, a grind to hear the stories from the mental health perspective as well. I mean, I think yeah. it's any athlete, but I would imagine it's a little tougher to your point of where, you know, you've trained so hard and it's that four-year interval. Um, it makes it all of a sudden difficult. Like, you know, what do you do now? Like, um, you know, I'm Nick the swimmer and or I'm Rob the runner, Joe the football player. Yeah. Um, it seems like that's a it might be a little bit tougher on that, uh, you know, that for swimmers or other Olympic athletes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's because of the uh, you know, the the cycle of it too. You have one one in a million shot of kind of hitting your goal. Um, and people kind of have a, a little bit of an identity crisis, I think. Yeah. Um, trying to figure out who they are and what they should be doing. And I, I have some, some friends in the sport that I know have, have struggled with that. Um, and uh, I mean, if you've seen any of these documentaries of Phelps yeah. talking, I mean, that's a big point for him too, is that's, that's who he was. And that's um, how everyone else thought of him as well uh, as the, the swimmer. And so trying to do anything else, which someone like Phelps probably, you know, doesn't have to move too far away from the sport, but you know, having to do do anything else after the fact is um, really difficult. And even while you're still competing in your sport, if people solely think of you as um, as as your sport and the 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 performance that you put out is your entire being, that's that's a lot of weight to carry too. Um, 
So I know we're talking about transitioning out of it now, but even while you're uh, while you're in it, you, you have to think of you know the years of buildup of solely being thought of as a swimmer or football player, or whatever you're doing, and right. then having to take that and and move it into to something else post career. It's tough. Yeah, no, de- definitely. So talk a little bit about um about your transition out of sports. You know, you you swam your whole life, like you said, well since you were ten, and you know the adjustments that you had to make, and then advice that you give to other athletes in similar situations? Yeah. So I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I, I think the biggest thing for me was shaping my story. Um, and, and, you know, I had no professional experience to, to, to build upon, but, um, to, you know, figuring out how to articulate how getting up at, at three 30 throughout high school and luckily college, I lived on campus. So I got to <laughs> sleep in a little bit later, but, That's good. um, you know, how, how the, the early mornings straight into class, um, straight into, to, to a lift, into an afternoon workout, getting my work done, you know, how, how that all translated to someone that was hireable and someone that would get things done and someone that an employer could, could rely on. And you're competing against people that have professional stories and have done, um, you know, they, they might've been able to do internships when, when athletes are out training, or they might've been able to have, um, you know, they had more time on their schedule. They had 30 less hours, um, a week of, of training, you know, where they could, they could use that to, to, to work, to work day jobs and have, have kind of corporate stories to, to share in the, um, you know, coming out of college where we had, we had our sport. Um, and so I remember hopping on a couple interviews early on more so just to kind of practice being in an interview and they were awful. I had no, I had no story. I had no, um, presence. I was just like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a likable guy. Uh, I, I work hard, I get things done. And, and that just, that just wasn't enough. Um, I had a story, I just hadn't formulated it yet. And so, um, then after hearing other people talk about their journeys and really looking back on, on my four years and reflecting of going from, going from a freshman all the way, all the way through senior and, and some of the things I did as, as a captain on the team it really helped shape my story that I would, I would share in, in interviews. And I, you know, everyone, everyone has that. You just have to really think about your role on the team, um, the value that you brought and figuring out how that translates to um, whatever you're applying for after the fact. Um, you know, I kind of talked about people wanting to stay close to what they know and, um, after after leaving their, their sports, people going into coaching, things like that. Well, I went into I went into the the, the sports world um, with my first job being with the A's because that's what I was um, that's what I was comfortable with. I had, I had uh, been an athlete, wanted to wanted to stay close to sports, work in sports. I didn't really didn't really know know much else. Um, software didn't seem exciting at, at, at the time, you know, which is living in the Bay Area. That's kind of what everyone ended up doing. I wanted to do something different. Um, so stayed close to, to what I knew in the sports world, but leveraged, um, so many stories of of getting up early, dealing, dealing with conflict, um, setting goals and, and having strategic plans for how I go about getting there. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that, that anyone hiring is going to, is going to want on their team. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And I mean, even, and talking other ones about uh, just people wanting to hire athletes. We had one, one CEO was talking about uh, just imploring athletes. Look, you've got this skill set and utilize. Yeah. I mean, guy, a couple of successful companies, and even uh, Damon Lumby, your CEO, who was uh, yeah. uh, one of our podcast guests earlier, just talked about just hiring athletes and just the importance of that skill set and really utilizing that. So uh, let's talk about what you're doing today. Yeah, so uh, right now I am sales manager here at Learn It. Um, we have have an awesome team of people that are are out there prospecting, finding new business. I um, I have a sales goal myself. Um, so in addition to to helping folks on my team get get to where 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 they want to go, um, you know, I'm also responsible for holding up my end of the deal, um, which is a really cool and kind of a unique environment because I'm 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 down in the the field with them, you know, making making calls, finding new business. Um, I think that plays into, you know, my growth mindset and always trying to, always trying to get better. Um, I'm not just out there dictating people 
hey, do this, do this, do that. I'm I'm here with you, trying to do the same things, hold, holding myself to the same standard, which uh, I think goes a, it goes a long way um, as as someone in leadership because you're not you're not telling people what to do. You, you have to lead by example still, um, which again, as a, as an athlete you have to do as well. You're on the team, you're, you're a captain, you're a senior, you know, you're one of the more, more tenured people and you want to get, get the younger guys on the right track. I mean, you, you have to lead by example. You can't tell them to, um, you can't tell them to show up early if you're walking in right as, right as practice is kicking off. Um, so I think that that skill set is translated really well to, um, to, to learn it. So um, you know, we got a, we got a feisty team here. It's great. We have people that they're not afraid to pick up the phones. Um, it, we, we provide a lot of value to folks, um, in the, the HR space or anyone leading a team that wants to help upskill their employees, um, and help them get to the next level. So, um, you know, it helps to have people with that kind of athlete mindset on our staff, because I mean, our product is literally about growth and development and getting better at, at, at your job. Um, and so you kind of need people like that on, on the front end that, that are educating our clients on, um, you know, the value of having professional development at your company um, and, and how to go about in, in instilling this culture of development. So, um, you know, I think, I think having athletes on board or people with that same kind of mindset really takes you a long way. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure there's also the uh, the competitive side as well, right? <laughs> another, yeah. another athlete. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I think that's uh, you know a, a, a huge component, especially being being on the sales side of the house. You know, I think it's kind of the um, the the forgotten skill set. If you look at what people study in school, you know, there's engineering and and several other things that you can go that are definitely you know obviously very important and hard skills and sales is um almost kind of an, an afterthought at least in education um but there are a lot of hard skills and, and kind of tangibles that come with um with being in sales and, and competition is, is one of them so having that natural tendency to, to to want to get better um to to thrive off the success of your teammates but then also use that to motivate yourself to uh to, to, to close more business and and hold your own it really goes a long way yeah for sure i mean i was a i was a collegiate runner and my yeah. career most of my career was in sales so same thing i saw that just being driven and you know just that goal setting and uh everything that you do as an athlete uh definitely translates in, into the world of sales uh so yeah. how do people find you today how do people find learn it learn it find, find nick you know yeah yeah so i think i think linkedin is a good place to start nick silverthorne on on uh on linkedin um learn it same same thing you know we're always putting out different um blogs and insights um uh, our, our website's a good place to start learn it.com um we have we have a bunch of free resources as well um so for folks that that may not have in their budget or really just want to check out what corporate learning looks like um you, you can find those on our, our site as well we're hosting uh bi-weekly thought leadership events with a few coming up in august and september so a really good chance just to see how, how other people think um how you get to see what's out there from a, a learning and development perspective so i'd say those would be the best places to start yeah and, and uh we'll, we'll put all this in the show notes and i highly recommend yeah. learning just a great great company a uh, great group of people, like uh, starting with Damon at the top and folks like Nick and others that are there, uh, definitely go out and uh, and you know tap into them and utilize their service. I think it, they can definitely help you out. And for us, you can find us at alumnidirect.com. Uh, our show is uh, on our Alumni Direct YouTube page, as well as across all the podcast networks. So really encourage people to like and follow our shows. I think there's uh, there's great people on it, like Nick, where they just kind of sharing their story and we really want to make an impact in helping these athletes transition out of sports. So uh, Nick, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. Uh, you're welcome.